Uh, hi everyone. Uh, today we will be discussing about uh, how we can programmatically label our unlabeled data uh, using um, a great Python library called the Snorkel. Uh, so let's uh, get away with the codes first of all. Uh, so eventually the sample problem that we are picking up here would be like we will have a, class, a bunch of general English words and gibberish that is uh, a word that don't exist in English dictionary. And we'll try to uh, label out these words into uh, n row binary class that is 0 and 1, where 1 would be an English dictionary word and a 0 label would be given to a gibberish word. Uh, now, let's get started. Uh, so, eventually, you will first install uh, like uh, uh, importing of two libraries that we require, even like some sub modules of snorkel. So, like I will be providing this blog link in the description below. Uh, so you can just focus on the explanations rather than the codes. Uh, preparing a label dataset that's something that we are preparing for the problem statements and real we would be having the data that is unlabeled for this. And eventually you can see that uh, we have two data sets that we have prepared. One is the training data frame which has words without any sort of labels and validation data frame where, where we have a small data set that is labeled for this. So eventually what happens is that in general we might be having in a, a real world 5,000 to 6,000 samples out of which we might be able to label out 100 to 200 samples. If even if we are not able to, that won't be an issue, but a validated, a small validated validation data that would help us in uh, judging the quality of the labeling that the snorkel has done for us. So, uh, the most important segment in snorkel is to have a certain idea of rules, a set of rules that we can think of which can bifurcate the binary or uh, multiple classes. That we have, like for example, uh, in case of gibberish versus English dictionary words, like in case of the gibberish word, we might think that it might not have any vowels. So, if a word comes that doesn't have any vowels, uh, more chances are that it would be uh, a gibberish word. Else, it can be an abstain. Now, abstain means that we are not sure. So, like for example, as I said, ki, uh, if we have a word uh, which don't have any vowels in it. Uh, so, we are pretty sure, like we assume that, okay, uh, it can be a gibberish word, but what if it has vowels? Now, you know that gibberish word may have vowels also. So, eventually, in the case of else statement, we would be using an abstain. So, we would be form, uh, forming small, small rules and would be uh, providing a decorator function called a labeling function so that our snorkel later on, we will see how snorkel will be able to recognize this function as a labeling function. So, we will be forming out some rules uh, depending upon our intuition. Depending on the data set, like what are the rules that we have formed here? Let's see them. Uh, no vowels. So, if there won't be any vowel in the word, we are assuming to be gibberish, else an abstain. That is, if vowels are present, then it might be, uh, it might fall in any category. That is, we are not sure, and hence uh, we are providing it as an abstain uh, vote, abstain label here. Now, the next uh, labeling function is not all vowels. So, if a word doesn't like, uh, is not considered a fall vowel, so it has at least one consonant and uh, some vowels alongside, so most of it would be a dictionary word, else an abstain. These are the rules that we have built out of intuition. Now, this can be anything that you wish to have, uh, like if you might uh, contradict me that uh, this rule doesn't follow your guidelines, that you think this is wrong. So, when you can have multiple rules, like if these are just general rules that I have thought about in five minutes. So you can give like in case of real world problem that we will be solving. Eventually you would wish to give some time for building on these rules. Third rule that we have formed is a length. So if a word is greater than at a particular threshold, so like for example, if a word is greater than of length 8, we are assuming it to be a gibberish as a dictionary word. Consecutive consonants, so uh, if we have three con consecutive consonants coming in in a particular word, uh, word we are assuming it to be gibberish as a dictionary word. So if there aren't any con uh, consecutive consonants, we are assuming to be dictionary words. Similarly, consecutive vowels. So eventually, as you have seen, we have found out some four to five rules. Now there hasn't, uh, there is no dependency of each of these rules on one another. So we can pretty sure that the uh, so we these are independent rules that we found out, uh, giving out two possible outputs. That is either uh, three possible outputs. That is gibberish. Dictionary word or an abstain. So we have also wrote the label for abstain. We have given a minus one. Abstain means that we are not sure. Now, uh, uh, next thing is that as we have found all the functions, we will form the list of these functions, LFS, and then using pandas LF apply. We have imported that uh, earlier. We will be forming an applier. 
uh, we will form the uh, pandas LF apply function. LF stands for labeling function. So uh, I am going to pass in the list of functions that we have uh, formed at LFS uh, into this pandas LF applier. And then apply this list of functions, this apply function, uh, this apply object that we got on the training data side as well as the validation data. So what will happen actually is that we will be calculating these features. The five uh, rules that we have uh, come through, that we have built out, uh, we will be applying all these functions to the training and validation data respectively. Now we will see that. So as you, can, as you know that we have uh, five uh, rules that we form. So we are getting uh, an error representation of five elements per row. That means uh, for each word that we have inserted, as I have already shown the training data, which consists of just one word. So you can see that uh, we have generated five labels against them. So minus one, 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 one. Uh, so minus one, as you remember, it was an abstain, one was a dictionary word. So eventually, uh, as you can see in the first row, out of the five variables, uh, four of them are one and one of them is minus one. Similar to the next one. Uh, now these are depending upon the five that we form. So each function is taking a particular place in this array and eventually giving an output depending upon the condition fulfilled. So we have formed uh, uh, n cross five matrix as of now. Uh, we are jumping straight on to the training side of the thing. So label model uh, is a uh, model that we will be training out. Label model is pre-existing in the snorkel uh, in the snorkel library uh, over which we will be training out the L train uh, function that we have, the L train values that we have written. Now L train is this n cross five array that we have generated using the applier function uh, apply or apply on the training data set. Now uh, we will be putting this L train on the label model and eventually using the label validate uh, we are predicting the labels for the L validate function. So L validate is nothing but the uh, after applying the apply or apply function on the validation data set. So what we eventually did is in label model, uh, we are uh, inserting uh, the L train data without any labels. Do you remember that? Because eventually the entire uh, target of this activity is to get labels for the training data set. So eventually we don't have labels. So what we are doing is that we have straight away uh, like fitted uh, the label model. Uh, with the training data set without any labels, and eventually, then we are, are trying to predict the labels using the label model for predict. Now, label model is more of a statistical model that don't, don't require any sort of labels, uh, and eventually, it is able to give out uh, the target value that we wish to have. Now, analyzing results, now analyzing results would make sense only if you have uh, some sort of small validation data set, and we would be, we would be seeing how accurate are we. Uh, when, uh, like, what is the performance of these rules that we found? Because these are found out of intuition. We don't know whether they are working or not. So, eventually, uh, when we look at the validation score, we can see that the F1 score, uh, the F1 score is uh, 0.7, so that is not bad. Accuracy is nearly 0.70%. So, this is 73 and the call is 78%. Now, this is a pretty good number given the fact that we have used a very small data set, that is 2000 words only. The label functions that we have built out were totally out of intuition. There was no, there was no, not a single analysis that we did, right? If we can think of some analysis, we can think of some rules depending upon the pattern. These results would improve. The training time taken was just two to three minutes, and we really don't have any labels in the beginning. So, uh, depending upon that, the performance looks really good, and eventually I would suggest you to try it out. Now,